All right, everyone, thank you for coming down tonight. Um, decided to put a little bit of a presentation together on content and link acquisition. I didn't really want to go into technical SEO because you've already had your minds blown by Dijan. So there's a lot of tactics here tonight. You're going you're gonna to go home tomorrow and think, what the hell am I going to do? But just start with the basics is my advice. If you don't know what SEO is tonight, I know I met a few people here that said they're just coming along, they want to learn more about online marketing, they quit their job, whatever. Like, go and check out like sites like Moz, Beginner's Guide to SEO, because that's going to be a good starting point if you don't know what you're doing. And um, yeah, so a little bit about my history. In 2013, I was working for my uh, uncle's construction company. So I was uh, doing laboring during the, um, during the school holidays. I realized what a hard job was. So I was like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. I don't want to be a laborer. So in 2005, I uh, learned how to code. So picked up coding, built a bunch of websites, I built um, a MySpace layout site. I don't know if anyone here remembers MySpace, but yeah, I built a site. Uh, some of my sites, in, they were all targeting the US market. So we had 25 million visitors come to these sites, primarily from SEO. So yeah, that was all a bit of fun. In 2009, my parents were like, go and get a real job. Like, you can't do this shit forever. So I uh, went and got a job at an agency. And at that time, I had, I had no clue that people would actually pay me to do this stuff. So I went and got a job at uh, Columbus Search, which was at the time Australia's largest paid search agency. So they were like, we want you to start our SEO and content team. So I started up the team. We were working for clients like David Jones, Woolworths. It was a bit of fun. In 2012, had enough of that. So I was like, we'll start Prosperity Media. We're working with a uh, whole bunch of different companies, mainly mid to large businesses, funded startups. Uh, last year, we won uh, Best Agency at the Australian Search Marketing Awards. So that was, uh, there was some huge companies that were up against and we only have like 14 staff. So we beat companies that have like a thousand employees. So that was pretty cool. So tonight, the reason that you're here, I'm going to go over three areas. So relevant backlinks, how to get them, relevant content, and also tools to help your business scale. So there's gonna be a bit in here for everyone. If you're a seasoned SEO professional, like Matt down the front, who's been doing it for like 10 years, or someone who's just started, like the guy over there who I was talking to before, he said he wants to get into the business. So yeah, all right, let's start it. So um, how do you find relevant content assets that are driving links? So I just went onto a site like Campaign Monitor. You look at, you jump into Ahrefs, you put in their domain and you can look at um, top pages on the website. And next to top pages, you can see referring domains. So you can go through each one of these individually. You can look at what their top pages are. You can work out how they're getting links to these top pages. This is one of the easiest way to reverse engineer competitors' content assets. Look at what they're doing and look at how they're doing it. You can also look into other companies, uh, Canva in Australia, they're really crushing SEO, link acquisition. So you can look through and you can see some of their landing pages, they've re acquired over 500 referring domains, just to different pages. And the thing is, some of these pages are ranking for highly competitive keywords in the US market. So we've got like photo editors, 528,000 searches a month, and they're in second position. So they're doing quite well. The next thing you want to do is at the start of the year, you want to make a content calendar. You want to plan out all your content assets for the whole year. I mean, April Fool's Day was yesterday. This is a great day for businesses to come up with a crazy idea and get some links and uh, get some press to your business. I mean, we made up a story about we hired Kevin O'Leary. We had a video from Cameo where Kevin was doing a shout out. And um, yeah, we got like a few thousand views to the page. and. Uh, that was cool. Like things like that can drive traffic and links. It's easy to do. Make content that's a bit controversial that's going to get links. So this was an example of a an aged care business where they made 13 amazing Halloween costumes for the elderly. So fun content. Like people say that aged care is a boring space, but the thing is, you can be creative in that space. You can get links. You can still do well. Comparison content. This is something that always does well. Like Sydney versus Melbourne. Um, we had a few guys in our office today from Adelaide and they were like, Adelaide's the best city in Australia. And then we said, hey, Sydney's the best. And then someone else said, no, Melbourne's the best. So things like that, this type of thought provoking content, 
the content that gets people talking, people linking to it, be a bit controversial, it does well. I'm using social media to get fans to like kind of share your content as well. This is something we did years ago for a client where we did a sh like a, a little question on Facebook. We said, what's the, the most annoying pet peeves in the gym? We're gonna make an infographic about it. Uh, so we got the question and answer data on Facebook. We made the infographic and then we shared it with the fans and the fans felt like they were part of the content creation and they went bananas over it. Once again, create controversial content. This was an example of a, an energy company. They made a death by caffeine calculator. So you put in your weight and it will tell you how many cups of coffee you drink a day before it'll kill you. So this had 100 links to it and it got over 115,000 shares. So very cool. Thumbtack in the US, they do a, a small business friendliness survey each year. So basically they get a bunch of links to that. They get heaps of shares. Everyone wants to find out what's happening in the small business sector. Doesn't matter what space you're in, you can, you can be creative. And the thing is, you don't have to pay a, a market research firm an arm and a leg to get some consumer data. You can, um, you can go onto Google consumer surveys and you can pay like a dollar per answer. So it's pretty cheap. You can get 300 survey respondents. You can pick demographic targeting. It's quite cool. This was a friend, Dennis, up the back. He runs a website, a uh, comparison space. So he did a roundup. It was like 50 ultimate sharing economy uh, sites in Australia. Things like this, people like they like to link back when they're part of like a top list or best sharing economy site. So this little list that he did, it's getting a getting good traffic, I would presume, and it's, it's getting people linking back to it because they say, oh, we're part of the best list. Open colleges, they, they really crush the content marketing. Uh, we work with the team for a long time. Um, they did, uh, they always do these like ego bait pieces, like 50 educational podcasts you should check out. Really great stuff and a lot of people love to link back to it. If you're really lazy for links and you're like, shit, I just want to get some quick links, you can, you can go onto sites like Harrow, help a reporter out. Also source bottle. Every day journalists come onto these sites and they're like, hey, I'm looking for someone to comment on mattresses or I'm looking for someone to comment on like um, anyone who owns a business. And I mean, I've been featured in sites like Forbes and like big e-commerce sites and one of our staff got featured in business.com. And all it takes is just replying to a journalist's email with the shout out. It's not hard. You can get some really high, high quality links. You just gotta put in the work to do it. Making uh, discount pages for students. This is another thing that we've done in the past. Like a lot of unis have these like student discount pages where they're like, they're pretty much just asking for people to make a page on their website with like a 10% off deal for a student. It doesn't take long for a business to make a 10% offer. You reach out to all the, the universities. You can do search parameters to kind of find out all the different pages in this space. It's quite easy. Quizzes are another really great area to drive traction. So once again, Open Colleges has crushed it with quizzes. They're like, if you search for career quiz, I think they're in like first or second position for that query. Um, a lot of people link back to quizzes. A lot of people share them. You can use them as part of a paid search funnel as well. As I said earlier, April Fool's content, like fake content, things like that, like it does well. I think a lot of brands in Australia, they're a bit scared to kind of do fake stuff, but if you've got a, a, like a funded startup that's a bit aggressive with growth, usually they're more inclined to try and test things like this. So this was an example of a, a site where they did like a zombie boot camp, and it was like a fake thing, but everyone went bananas and shared it, and it got a bunch of likes and shares and things like that. Uh, Finder in Australia has been doing some really good content over the years. They did a one, uh, they do like these cryptocurrency uh, predictions. Even though cryptocurrency has really died off, a lot of people still seem to be linking to cryptocurrency content. Uh, we've tested that a bit for clients in the finance sector as well. It still does well. I noticed they had 200 referring domains to that one asset. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, relevant content. Uh, when you're building out content assets, always look at the PAA question. So that's people always ask. Because the thing is, with PAA, this is easy content that you can build landing pages for your business on. So I did the query payday loans, which is a, it's, <laughs> it's a pretty spammy term. Like a lot of affiliates, a lot of uh, bigger businesses. But yeah, it's, it's competitive. So if you build out content around this, like one of the queries is like, can you go back to jail if you're not paying back a payday loan? Like if you make a piece of content on this, you can get a lot of search volume easily. 
Related searches is also a great one to look in for content ideas. Same again, just go to the bottom of a Google search query and you get a lot of ideas. Creating landing pages, like comparison pages. So we did a lot of work for Campaign Monitor, like Campaign Monitor versus Marketo versus MailChimp versus SendGrid. You wanna have these comparison pages set up for every one of your competitors, but you wanna take it to a next level. You can do competitors versus competitors. We've got clients in the US where they go crazy with this. They do their brand versus their competitors and they do competitors versus competitors. You can take it to a whole nother level. There's a lot of opportunity there. Scraping um, auto-suggest is also good. You can scrape auto-suggest queries and get a lot of ideas around that. So for example, you can put in currency trading. There's a whole bunch of tools online where you can do auto-suggest scraping. You can get the search volume. A good metric that you always want to look at when you're doing SEO and keyword research, you want to look at CPC. Because if the CPC is high, you know that people are really aggressively bidding on it. If you see a CPC that's like 0.04, like you know it's just like a shitty term that it's not gonna be worth your while targeting it. Also, you wanna optimize at a landing page level. You wanna look at your competitors, you wanna look at what they're doing and you wanna work out how you can make your landing pages better. You wanna look at competitors' top keywords that are driving traffic. This is an easy one, you can do this in SEM Rush, Ahrefs. You wanna look at how they're currently getting the traffic and how are they doing it? So you can reverse engineer it, look at the content depth, look at what they're targeting, how many words. This is a quick one for a US client. So this, this client came to us like in 2017 and they're like, we wanna target the US market. We wanna target some pretty like heavily contested terms. Um, so we're like, yeah, we'll build out a strategy. We built out a 12,000 word piece of content that was highly targeted to that query. We did, we had 140 referring domains to that content asset. We had this, this page, it's been bouncing around between like two and threes for 165,000 search query term. And it's ranking for a whole, it's ranking for like 2,300 different terms. So this one content asset's driving a huge amount of traffic for this business. You can take it to the next level. You can update old content. You can find, you just can do queries on your website and you can see what pages are outdated. So if you've got a piece of content that's a 2015 or 2016 version, you can just update that and make the 2019, it's easy. There's a whole world of strategies that go into that area as well. You can also find content on your website that's undervalued and it's short and you can update it. Now, we're gonna look at a few quick little tools that we use. So, Dijan mentioned this one earlier, I believe, PageSpeed Insights. It's a really good tool by Google because even today, right, I saw someone who owned an e-commerce site and they're like, hey, does anyone know how to help me? My e-commerce site's not converting at all. And I was like, okay, what's the URL? I go, just chuck it into PageSpeed Insights. Its mobile score was like 10 out of 100. So instantly, you can put it into PageSpeed Insights you can get a bunch of actionable advice that you can take back to your team and say, what can we actually change that's gonna take it to the next level. Another good tool you can look at is um, Pentest Tools. This is a, a good little tool because it picks up uh, hidden subdomains on a website. So if, you've got, if you work with bigger businesses, usually they like, they like to set up a lot of idiotic subdomains for like prior campaigns and things like that. Also hackers like to target subdomains, so this is, this is a, like a more security based tool, but it's very useful for technical SEO. Um, another good one is an accessibility tool. It's called Tenon.io. So basically you can put in a website URL and it will pick up all the accessibility issues. Another like unused tool that a lot of people don't think about is um, Built With. Basically on Built With, you can review a lot of things. You can look at like what scripts are currently being used on the website. You can look at it, have they updated their SSL over time. So this one website I was looking at, I noticed that they, they switched from a wildcard SSL down to a, like a default SSL. I'm like, why would you do that? Like it's, 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 a, it's a conversion factor, it's, it's a CTR factor, like little things like that. It's an easy win to ask the business. Another really good tool that's come out in the last year or so is uh, remove.bg. So you can, um, remove any background instantly from a website. So this is quite a useful little tool if you're in the e-commerce space. 
The next one, Buzz Sumo. This is a cool little tool. They're, they're top uh, most shared content. It's uh, very useful for business owners. Definitely check it out. Um, you can do the same things on Ahrefs as well. They have a, co a content, top content section as well now. They're always advancing that as well. Uptime Robot, it's another cool little tool if you want to test uptime for your website. Um, definitely worth checking out. Little Warden, this is a tool from the US, uh, UK. Sorry. Um, basically what it does is it, it will track different SEO elements on your website. So if something goes wrong, like you have a robots.txt change by a developer, if you have redirect issues like HTTPS, non-WW pages, it will give you a warning about that. It's pretty cheap as well. Answer the public, this is another cool little tool for keyword research. Definitely worth checking out. You can get like keyword graphs, you put in your keyword and it will tell you all the different relevant terms around that. Hunter.io, if you're doing some outreach at scale, it's a great tool to kind of pick up contact information. Even if you're doing sales and like B2B sales, it's a good little tool for that as well. Keyword Everywhere, this is a great little tool for keywords as well. Um, it's a, a Chrome and Firefox plugin, so definitely worth checking out. Also this year, we're gonna be launching an SEO course. There's a lot of bullshit SEO courses in Australia that are like 101, like really basic shit. A lot of people in the US have been hitting me up and saying, can you do a course? I'll pay for it. So yeah, we got a domain that I bought like eight years ago, seocourse.com.au. So yeah, if you wanna sign up to the course, um, shoot an email to hello at prosperitymedia.com.au with the title SEO course and say, I'm interested. And when we release it, like hopefully this year, um, yeah, we'll let you know, because it's, it's not gonna be arm and a leg. We're probably gonna have a lot of great content. I mean, this stuff that we talked about tonight, we're just scraping the surface. SEO is such a big area. There's so many different areas that you can go into. It's, it's, it's a huge area. I've been doing it for 14 years. Um, there's always new things you can learn. Like, it's, it's such a diverse area. I think there's a lot of scammers in the space. A lot of people don't know what they're doing. There's a lot of cowboys. I'd go as far to say 90% of agencies in Australia shouldn't be operating. They, uh, they should just uh, stick to whatever they were doing because they're just conning clients. So yeah, you've got to be careful. You've got you to ask your agency the right questions. You've got you to do your background. You've got to learn SEO yourself. Because the thing is, a lot of business owners make the mistake where they don't actually learn the basics of SEO. They don't ask for a link acquisition report each month. They don't actually ask, what are you doing? Because if you don't ask what you're doing, that gives the agency free reign to just do whatever the hell they want or just do nothing, which we see a lot. So um, yeah, be careful. And um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? Because uh, I'm sure myself or Dijon will be able to elaborate on anything further.